If you've lived in Texas for any amount of time, you've probably had a bad experience with REFA. REFA is an acronym that stands for Red Imported Fire Ants, and it refers to a species of small red ant that's considered invasive in Texas. These guys were first introduced to the United States in the 1930s, unintentionally, and since that time they've made their way into Texas around 1950, and they've now taken over about two-thirds of the state. You've probably seen the loose earth mounds that fire ants create in short grass pastures or on people's lawns following a rainstorm, and if you've disturbed those mounds you may have learned why they're called fire ants. It's because of the mildly painful sting that they deliver when they're agitated. Like many invasive species, fire ants can have negative impacts on wildlife, and that includes quail. And there are several both direct and indirect ways that fire ants can affect quail. The main direct way that they can have an impact is by attacking and killing quail chicks as they're hatching. Now, if you've ever had the opportunity to examine a quail egg, you've probably noticed that the shell and the membranes of that egg are actually really tough and really thick. Fire ants are incapable of breaking through that tough shell, but what happens is that as quail chicks are hatching, they'll puncture the shell with their egg tooth, and then from that point forward, it can take several hours before they make it out of the shell completely. During that time, if a scout ant finds the hatching nest and alerts the rest of its colony, then those ants can swarm the nest and that'll be the end of those quail chicks. Even once those chicks make it completely out of the eggshell, they're not entirely safe because if they happen to run through a fire ant nest or even get just a few bites on their legs, then the painful welts that result from those bites and stings can debilitate the chicks to the point where they can't effectively keep up with their parent and their siblings. The indirect impacts of fire ants on quail may be an even bigger deal, and it has to do with what fire ants use as food sources. These ants are omnivorous, which means that they eat both plant and animal food sources, and their main prey consists primarily of insects. So that includes things like chiggers, grasshoppers, ticks, caterpillars, cockroaches, which are all also major food sources for quail. So if the fire ants are out there eating the insect biomass in the environment, then that leaves less that's available for quail hens, and they need that protein in the insects to produce eggs, and it's also less for quail chicks, who need that good insect protein in order to sustain their rapid growth during the first few weeks of their life. So those are some of the proposed effects that fire ants may have on quail, but what actually happens in reality? The good news is that quail and fire ants actually have very different habitat preferences. Whereas fire ants tend to colonize more in sort of short grass monoculture types of environments, like the kind that you'd find in urban areas, for example, quail tend to much prefer habitat like what we find out here on the Rolling Plains Quail Research Ranch. They like highly diverse native grasslands. That doesn't mean that fire ants are never found in quail habitat, because there are some there, but the densities of fire ants in really high quality habitat are going to be much lower. We also don't really have a good idea of just how often fire ants predate quail chicks. The fact is, even though we don't know the full extent of how fire ants can impact quail and other wildlife, Generally, invasive species are bad news for our native species. So you might be wondering now, well, what can I do about fire ants? Or if I have them, how do I get rid of them? And unfortunately, once invasives are established, it can be really difficult to get them out of an area. They suddenly find themselves in this new environment without any of their previous predators, competitors, or diseases to keep their population in check. So it's very easy for them to spread. Chemical spray treatments are one option that tends to be popular with fire ants, but they also have some drawbacks. If they're used consistently over time, then the ants can actually build up a resistance to them, similar to how bacteria can develop resistances to antibiotics. Options other than that include broadcasted baits, which are a little bit easier to apply and tend to have some lower resistance, as well as simply uh, pouring some boiling water on a mound of fire ants is another effective way to do spot treatments. Now if we're talking about a large area of wildlife habitat, those types of spot treatments are really no longer cost or labor effective. 
Instead, researchers have been experimenting with a new way to control fire ants using what's called biological controls. There are several species of flies, called forid flies, which parasitize the fire ants. They essentially find a fire ant colony, lay their eggs on the back of the fire ant's head, and when those fly larvae hatch, they kill the fire ants and the colony becomes dead. When it comes to helping quail deal with fire ants, the most effective thing to do is to foster really high quality, diverse, native grassland habitat. Because when you do that, you're taking advantage of the habitat preference differences between fire ants and quail. So you're helping to suppress the numbers of fire ants while giving quail all the habitat and resources they need to thrive.